She has become one of the most prominent figures of the Iranian protest movements. Climber Elnas Rakabi, who took part in an international championship without wearing a headscarf. Now, a week after the competition, concerns remain over her whereabouts and safety. Iranian authorities promised she wouldn't be punished or suspended from competing over the incident after Rakabi apologized and claimed it all had happened unintentionally. She received a hero's welcome back in Tehran, but now media reports claim that following her return, she was forced to confess under duress and placed under house arrest. The New York-based Center for Human Rights in Iran has appealed to Climbing's international body to protect the athlete, tweeting, don't take the government in Iran's word at face value. It has a documented history of detaining, maiming, and killing those who oppose it. And Rakabi isn't the first Iranian female athlete to be caught up in a hijab controversy. Shoray Bayat is an arbiter for the International Chess Federation in 2020 while competing at the World Chess Championship in Shanghai. She also fell foul of Iranian authorities because of her headwear. Ms. Bayat, welcome to the day. I want to talk about your particular case in a minute, but first I'd like to hear your reaction to the case of Elnas Rakabi. Is there reason to worry about her safety? Uh, I think Elnaz is our champion. He made a, a big uh, decision by uh, not wearing headscarf during the tournament. And this is uh, showing, uh, I mean, in action, she showed that she is uh, with Iranian people and supporting the revolution in Iran. Uh, so, uh, of course, I'm worried for her safety. Uh, because uh, we know Iranian regime, we know that it's a brutal regime and it doesn't uh, respect to human rights and freedom of speech. Uh, so uh, I, I also heard the news about Elnaz. Uh, I heard that she doesn't have access to her phone. She, uh, uh, we saw that a photo of her was published uh, on media uh, visiting uh, uh, Ministry of Sport. And then uh, it was like she's apologizing and then another post on um, her Instagram. But her actions doesn't match with this thing. So that's why I'm worried for her safety. You yourself took a courageous stand against Iran's oppressive rulers. Tell us what happened. Uh, yes, as you know, I'm an international arbiter. I was orbiting in the Women's World Chess Championship Tournament in 2020. Uh, when uh, the authorities, uh, when the official of Iranian Chess Federation told me my hijab is not proper. Actually, my hijab was totally acceptable by Iranian standards, and they were demanding me more. So I decided to protest against it, and then I pushed my scarf even uh, back more to show more of my hair uh, so that they cannot... Uh, you know, bother me. It was like sending a message to them uh, to stop harassing me over hijab. But the next day, I saw that all Iranian uh, media, I mean, the important news agencies belong to the Iranian regime, uh, wrote that I, I, I mean, they condemned me for not wearing hijab. And there was also uh, interviews with the president of the Chess Federation saying that uh, uh, we have nothing to do with her and, uh, you know, she's not with us. Were uh, you surprised by the harsh reactions? Also. Sorry, were you surprised by those reactions coming out of Iran? Of course, I was very surprised because I couldn't uh, predict that this is going to happen because still I had my head scarf on my hair, but I was uh, on my head, but I was uh, deciding to show more of my hair so that they don't harass me to wear it. Pro, more proper hijab and demanding me more and more. Uh, so yeah, this was shocking for me. Uh, but then when I saw everything on media, it was like, uh, I couldn't believe it. It was just shocking because they were condemned me. And then my social media was uh, people were uh, messaging me, uh, sending me these screenshots uh, from different news agencies. It was like I was condemned everywhere by the government, by the regime. And then uh, the Federation asked me to write, an, uh, write a public apology letter and to post it in my social media, to post it on my Instagram. And at the meantime, they purged my photo 
from their, uh, you know, from their uh, Telegram channel. So that that was really a message for me. Then uh, I I asked them to send me a letter uh, that I will be safe if I come back to Iran. Yeah. Uh, first, they said that they will send me this letter, but they never sent it. And, uh, you know, then there was another interview with the president of the Federation said that we cannot send such letter to that yeah. she's asking. You never returned uh, to Iran. How do you feel now watching all the brave women and girls out on the streets taking off their hijabs and standing up for their rights? I'm very proud of Iranian people. Uh, I always knew, because I'm one of them, I always knew that uh, we are uh, suffering from this mandatory hijab. Uh, we Iranian people are not against hijab, but we are against mandatory hijab. We believe in freedom of choice. And uh, so I'm very proud of each and every person who are risking their life by coming to the street to protest against uh, mandatory scarf and not only that it's a movement it's a revolution for women's rights and human rights what would be your message for the protesters back home we have some 30 seconds left maybe if you had a brief message for all the girls and women out in the streets i would like to tell them that i'm very proud of them and i would like to tell them that we are getting brave and braver each day uh, this is very important that we stand together and we support each other, and our good times is coming. Sorry, Bayat. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us tonight. Thank you.